Good evening. I want to welcome you to uh, this night uh, session here at uh, New Creation uh, Fellowship Online Training Center. My name is Roy Williams. I'll be your instructor tonight. And we are basically going to pick up uh, where we left off at last uh, session, or the last teaching. And it's always a blessing to get into God's word and let him just more or less like minister to you the things that uh, he so graciously promised each and every one of us. And when you look at the word of God, you know, and a verse of scripture just came across my spirit while I was uh, just uh, studying the word. And it's, it's uh, Proverbs. It's in the book of Proverbs. And, uh, and it's all reference to, you know, the things that we speak out of our mouth. And that's what we're going to look at uh, in reference as to who we are tonight. We're going to look at because of salvation, what God has so graciously given us through his son, Jesus Christ. He has, give, he has made us right. He has declared us right. And so the righteousness of God that he speaks of is not based on what we do. It's based on uh, who he is and uh, and who he is on the inside of. So and I come to find out when we look in scripture, especially the New Testament, that righteousness is not of the law. It does not do. But righteousness, what it does, it speaks. See, and uh, when we get over there in uh, Romans, we're going to look at a couple scriptures there that really ministered to me in reference to, you know, not only who we are, but what we have in reference to what we speak out of our mouth. So that's uh, Proverbs chapter 13. And that's going to be uh, verse uh, three. And it reads that he that uh, keepeth his mouth uh, keepeth his life, he says, but he that openeth mouth wide, his lips shall have uh, destruction. So uh, that's very important to understand that the words you speak, they're not just uh, noise. Uh, words are, have creative power and they create the very thing that uh, that word encases. And when you look at the word, the Bible tells us that the word of God is, is, uh, is a seed. And we know that any seed produces after its own kind in and of itself. So we're going to go turn over to uh, Romans chapter 10. And we're going to start there, but before, we, before I just start reading in uh, Romans 10, I would just like to br briefly you know, just reference a few things in regard to, you know, the covenant that God made with man. Anytime God spoke to man or he dealt with man, he dealt with man based in and up on a promise or a covenant or a contract or an agreement. And it's one thing I found out about the covenant of God. It's everlasting. And I know that God says all of his promises are yes and, every, and amen. So for me to study covenant, it gives me an understanding about not only who God is, but who I am and what God has given that I might rule and reign as a king in the earth realm. Because God has declared each and every one of us as king. So when we look at covenant, we get a better understanding of, you know, scripture. And, you know, and we get a better picture of God because we see like in the Old Testament, we, we see a picture of who Christ is. But in the new covenant, we see the actual person. You know, and because the, the Bible tells us the word was made flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld the, the glory of God. And it's because of what Jesus did on the cross that gave us the ability to rule and to reign as kings in life. So I am. I declare this every day, several times a day. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that righteousness, I used to think it was based on doing something wrong or doing something right. If that was the case, it would become a work. And I'm not saved by work by my works. I'm saved by grace through faith. The scriptures tell us uh, not of works, least any man should boast. So that's Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and verses, verses 9. See, and in order to when you study covenant, you get a better understanding of, of you know, of what the covenant meant. You know, when God spoke uh, that new covenant in, in reference of uh, the New Testament and we see that that is a covenant of grace and I will always be God's beloved. And it's not based here again. I, you'll hear me reference this several times. It's not based on what I do because I was raised under and in a law mentality. If I do good, I get good. But that's not uh, uh, God's way. God says, if I believe right, he says I can live right. And it's based on my belief system that determines as to whether or not I'm going to rule and reign in the things of God. So that's why it's so important to study the covenant of God or, you know, just the covenant that he's made with man. And see, in understanding the covenant, you'll see that that within itself is a, a big piece of the missing puzzle because man don't have an understanding about who God is. And, you know, in the promises that God uh, had 
has made to mankind. So when you look at it and you look at it in, in the realm or in the context in which the scriptures teach, you'll see that you will have a, uh, a better understanding of who you are, like I said earlier, and you'll never, ever, never, never be the same again because the word of God is alive and, and it will change every aspect of your life. So let's turn to Romans uh, chapter 10. And we're going to look at a couple of verses there I thought that were very, very, very good for me to, to look at because I know that I used to think that words were just noise. I didn't think that they had any substance whatsoever. But I've come to find out through looking at scriptures that uh, the words that you speak will shape and form and fashion your very destiny. So let's go over and look at uh, Romans chapter 10. I'm going to start reading in verses. Uh, I'm going to start reading in verse 5. Uh, so and we listen, we, we, now remember we're studying, looking at applied grace. And like I said earlier at the beginning of this teaching that uh, grace is just uh, basically receiving. What God is so graciously and freely given. That's, that's what grace is. And it's free. It's, it's, it's a free, it's unmerited, undeserved, and it's favor. That's what grace is. So we'll see and start reading in verse 5. We see it's a, for Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. And he says that a man which does, which does. See, that's, that's, that's a work right there, which does those things, shall live by them. But then we see in the next verse there we see, but the righteousness, which is of faith, scriptures tells us, speaks and speaks in this way. It says, say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it? What says what? What says righteousness? Because we just saw that righteousness speak. See, and that's when you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, which takes place once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the ability to speak your destiny into place. And so that's why everything, and we've always said this in this ministry, everything that operates in the kingdom of God is word activated. So you have to speak it. So you take a thought by saying. You don't take a thought by just being silent. So there's no such animal as or puppy or thing as silent prayer. So we see again in the Romans chapter 10 verse 5 that the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. So and just to go back and put a pen there just for a second when you look at what it says here I used to I used to think that faith speaketh. If I had faith it speaks but it's not what it's, it's that's not what it's saying here. It's saying the righteousness which is of faith speaks. So it's saying righteousness speaks. So when you become the righteousness of God, you speak. You start speaking things into existence. And I like what it says over there in uh, Job. You, if you have a Bible, turn over to Job 22. No, excuse me. Yeah, Job 22, 28. And it reads, it says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. So that's what kings do. They declare and they decree. They have the ability to do that, to just speak things into existence. And so God says, once we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it's telling us over here in Romans 10, 5, it says righteousness speaks. And it says that we, we shouldn't be trying to bring Christ down from heaven because he's already he's already come down from heaven. And we shouldn't be trying to bring Christ again up from the dead because he's already risen from the dead. He says, but what saith, what saith it, what saith what, what saith righteousness? He says the word is near thee even, even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith that we preach now notice it, it didn't say that the word of mouth the, 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 the word of God is, is, is near someone else 
it says the word of God is near you. And it said it should be in your mouth and even in your heart. That is the word of, of, of faith, which we preach. So this passage is really telling us what we should say. See, we shouldn't be saying, oh, I wish Jesus would come down from heaven, stand next to me. Just to meet my needs, we shouldn't be speaking like that. But once again, I tell you, he's already done that. Jesus has done all that he's going to do. Uh, to conquer Satan by spending three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And being raised again from the dead and ascended into heaven. And being seated at the right hand of the Father. Everything has been done. For Jesus to come, come back down again from heaven would be to say to him, Oops, oh, look out. There's a few things I forgot to do while I was here on earth. That's why Jesus said it was finished, it was completed. It was a perfect completion. And so he don't have to come and try to improve on anything, it's done. Man's fate, man's redemption, man's salvation, man's righteousness has been completed and it's been completed in Christ Jesus. So that completion and that resurrection all happened on the death, burial and resurrection of, of Christ Jesus. So when we look at the word of God, we see that Jesus has given us the answer. See, and the answer is in that very person. Notice what it says. He's given us the answer. See, we've been looking at manifestation here uh, at this ministry, at, in this ministry, excuse me. Because, you know, it's one thing to speak the word. It's another thing to live this word or let that word become a living aspect or a part of your life. So notice what he says. The answer, he says, if you have the word, you have the answer. Notice what he says, and the answer is in your mouth, even in your, in your heart. So everything we'll need to live an overcoming victorious life, everything we need to conquer Satan and all that we might go through is in the very word that you speak out of your mouth. It doesn't require Jesus coming back to earth. All the answer requires you putting the word of God in your heart and professing it out of your mouth. The same creative power God used in the beginning, the same creative power God used in the beginning is the same word that he's given us to speak into situations in every situation in our life. Now, we don't have to please God. See, that's when you look at the righteousness, when it says in reference to Moses back in the, the, uh, verse 5 and Chapter 10, it says, for Moses describes the righteousness, which is of the law. And it says the man which does those, th which does. See, our righteousness is not based on works. It's based on a completed work. And that completed work is in Christ Jesus. So just say, for instance, I, I, I was trying to please God in reference to my works. Well, how would I know when he was pleased? See, so that's why Jesus says it was finished and that completed work was in the very work that Jesus accomplished back on Calvary. And when I look at scriptures, I see that God had already, he had already chose me. He had already predestined me. And he did that from the foundations of the world. And he, he did that for you also. So when we look at the goodness of God, we see that every God, everything that God gave mankind was based on just a free gift. And that's what salvation is basically all about. And that's when, when you look at salvation, you're just looking at the, the goodness of God, just the grace of God. Just even in the package of salvation, it, it, it involves everything that you need here in the earth realm. So the things that we should be confessing is is not confession, it's not, it's not a work. It says, confession is not, I know if I say the word of God, I, no, I know if, if I said, speak the word of God long enough, God will feel sorry for me and he'll heal me. No, God has already healed you. That's important to understand, he's already done it. He's, you've already been healed. Maybe if I, I confess the word 50 times or maybe 100 times, I will force God to meet my needs. Well, you see, God has already met your needs. He's already blessed you. And that's important to understand. See, everything that you are in Christ Jesus, you are because of the finished work of Christ Jesus. See, confession never changes God. Confession changes you because God don't change. 
And that's, that's because I thought, I thought I could move God if I just said it long enough or hard enough. No, God will never, ever change. See, God, he didn't come. He's not going to move based on your needs. He's going to move based on your confession. And you need to, that's something. So because we're talking about manifestation, manifestation. So in order for it to be manifested, you need to speak it. And once you speak it, you need to receive it when you pray, according to scriptures. And then the prerequisite is you shall have. But if you don't receive it when you pray, that means you don't have it. And God says he's given you all things that pertains to life and to godliness. So. Just when we look at fasting, fasting is good, but it, but 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 if you're fasting to change God, you won't accomplish anything. Fasting doesn't change God. It changes you. It helps you. You may say, oh, I'm going to fast until uh, until uh, God moves on my behalf. Well, I guess you're going to you, you're going to start it there because, like I said. You don't God doesn't change. And it's even when you look at even in tithing, we think if we if we tithe and so forth, it's going to prompt God to move. Tithing doesn't move God. It puts you in a position to receive from God. That's what tithing does. And so like. You know, even like I used to say, if I just pray long enough, God will change. See, I come to understand one thing about this God of the Bible. Once I started looking at scripture, see, there's two types of word that we can reference in scripture. We can deal with the, the logos word or we can deal with the rhema word. Until just earlier, I, I thought they both basically were the same. You know, but I come to find out the logo, logo, logos word was just that word that my mom kept on her coffee table uh, in the dining room. It's just a written word just laying there. I thought just by it being in the house, if you know, it would keep whoever and whatever that was foreign away from the household. But that's not true. That's just like, you know, the garlic and the cross with the vampire. No, no, you need it. You need it more to deal with those situations and see. So just having the written word, it's good that you have it. But see what you want that word to be is that communicated word, that spoken word, the word that you understand. That's the rhema word. And see, that's what that's why you you come to Bible study. That's why you, you study the word so the word can become rhema to you so you can have an understanding of what's being said to you. So you can take that word and apply it to your everyday living, everyday living situation. So so in both instances, you know, the, the, the word and the passages, you know, in Romans 17, it says so in Romans 10, 17, excuse me, it says so then faith cometh by hearing and and, and hearing by the, the, the word. See, that right there is talking about not the logos word, but the, the rhema, the word that is understood and that's spoken out of your mouth. See, because the scriptures tell us, you know, once you believe, it says you're going to speak. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna speak the word. So just because you have the word of God around, like I said, it's not going to change your, your life or your situations. You've got to get that word into your heart. And you have to speak that word out of your mouth and you have to do that with understanding. So rhema is the spoken word. But even more than that, as mentioned, as I mentioned beforehand, it is the communicated word of God. Just because you hear someone speak the word today does not mean it is rhema unless you hear, hear that word and you hear that word with understanding. So so rhema, the rhema word is the is God's word, which has been illuminated in your heart. Like I've said, to them, oh, man, now I see exactly what God is saying in, in, in a certain scripture. See, I have an understanding in reference to it. So I'll start speaking that into not only in my life, into the lives of, of others. So once you get those black words off of the page right here, off of these white pages, and they can soon become life to you once you speak them and you speak them with understanding. So we see here that the righteousness of which are the law, it's in reference to works. See, in the law of the Old Testament, it demanded man to be right, but could never produce righteousness because it was based on a work. But the righteousness, which is of faith, the scriptures tells us it speaks. 
And I, you know, like I said earlier, I used to just think that it was faith that speaks. No, but it's righteousness that speaks. That's who you are in Christ Jesus. He had, he's not only made you right, but he has declared each and every one of us, each and every one of us, the righteousness of God. And we can see that in in uh, Corinthians, when Paul was speaking to First uh, Corinthians, I believe that's one thirty. Yeah, that's First Corinthians, one thirty, and it reads: "This is but of Him, that's of God. Are you in Christ Jesus, who God is made unto us?" First of all, righteousness. No, excuse me. First of us, wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according to as it is written, he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. So everything that you receive from this God of the Bible based on that salvation package was received by faith through grace of our Lord and our Savior, Christ Jesus. So we want to release that righteousness that's in our that's in our hearts. See, the righteousness of God, it's not a subject. It's just like all the other attributes of God. They're not subject. It's a person. And that righteousness lives in us. And the Bible tells us that we're, you know, of, in, he says that we're complete. Scriptures tells us that we're complete. We are complete in him. It says, he is the fullness of, of the Godhead mightily and it says, we are complete. We are complete in him. So we want to realize that speaking has the ability to form all that we do not see in the earth realm. So you've already received it. It's already yours. All you have to do is speak it and believe it once you speak it. So this is something that I thought was really good. That who you are in Christ Jesus, you are the righteousness of God. The world can never change your righteousness because greater is he that is in you that is in the world. So the world cannot change your righteousness, but your righteousness can change the world. That's why you need to go out and you need to minister this word of righteousness to let them know that they are once they become saved. They are the righteousness of Christ Jesus right then because, see, the world is steeped in works, in the works mentality, and it keeps them from receiving what God is so freely given. And so you need to know all you need to do is speak it. And once I, I looked that up, I, I had a, a couple of scriptures that I thought was was relevant to who I am in Christ Jesus. And over in First John five fourteen. It reads, um, that's 1 John 5.14, because here again, I, I need to continue to say this. Words are more than just noise. Words have creative power. And God says, those that are the righteousness of God, we saw back in Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 6, it says, those that are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, he says, they speak. You're going you're gonna, to you're, you're gonna speak it. So in 1 John chapter 4, verse, uh, fourteen, he says, excuse me, oh, five, I, I need to get over chapter five, I was in four, let me get over chapter five, verse 14, and it reads, and this is the confidence. Notice how uh, uh, Paul, I mean, John is speaking here. He says, and this is the confidence that we can have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, and we know his will is his word, he says, he heareth us. And he says in verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. See, because God, Jesus has already completed all that he's going to complete in this earth realm. Everything's already ours. All we need to do is speak it. It's a completed work. It's a finished work. All we're doing is resting in a completed work. And see, he tells us to work, but he tells us, he tells us to labor. But that labor is to enter into a rest or a finished work. 
So we can see that we can be confident in this very thing if we ask anything in accordance to his word. Not only does he hear, but we know that we have the petition that we request of him. So in uh, Mark eleven twenty three, we see, now you gotta always keep in mind that uh, words, whether spoken positively or negatively, has creative power. Because when you look over in the book of Genesis, it says everything. I believe that's Genesis 1:11. Everything is created after its kind, and it's in each and every seed that we sow, either in the earth or by way of the words of our mouth. So in Mark chapter 11, I'm gonna start reading in verse. Uh, I'm going to start reading in verse 23. No, I'm going to read in 20. I'm going to start reading in verse 22. And it says, that's Mark 11, 22. And it reads, he says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, he says, Have faith in God. And she said, For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever, that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He says, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So it's important to understand that he is saying that once you speak it and you believe it, you shall have exactly what you say. See, God has already created us to live the good life. And uh, when you look over in John 3, 3, 2, it's, it, this, this here is, is so good, but it's important to know that your soul has to prosper. That's contingent to the health and the prosperity. Because I've come to find out God does not work outside of the realm of his word. Only in the confines of his word. That's why he says this is the confidence that we can have in him. If we ask anything in accordance to his will, which is his word, he says, we know that we can, that he hears us and we can have the petition on which we request of him. And so over in, in 3 John 2, it, it reads, that's 3 John 2, he says, beloved, he says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. See, so your health and your prosperity is contingent to your soul prospering. And what is your soul? It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. So you need to prosper there first. So, and that prosperity comes by way of the word of God, the washing and water of the word. See, this is what prospers your soul. Over in um, Proverbs 20. I think that's Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20. Yeah, let me get over there first. So I'll tell you what it is. Proverbs chapter 4, excuse me. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, 20. And it says, my son, he says, attend. That's Proverbs 4, 20. He says, my son, attend to my words. He says, incline thy ear unto to my sins. He says, let them not depart from thine eyes. He says, keep them in the midst of thy heart. He says, because if you do, he's speaking about his word now. That's right. Remember now, righteousness speaks. That's what it, righteousness speaks. He says, the word of God. He says, he says it's near you. Notice he didn't say it was up in heaven, it was down here. And he says it's near you, even in your heart, even in, in your mouth. He says, verse 21, he says, let them not depart from thine eyes. I'm back in Proverbs chapter 4. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. He says, if you do, he says, they are. What is the word? They are life unto those that find them and health to all of your flesh. So. Your healing is just a word away. 
You speak it into your life. You said, it doesn't look like I'm healed. Well, you missed it. It's not based on what you see. It's based on what you are confessing. See, because it's the word of the God that, that has done the healing, that has completed that work. It's not what you feel or what you see or the evil report that you might get from a person with several uh, letters behind their name. It's based on what God has professed. Now, he says, whatsoever you say, he says, if you believe it, say you believe it when you pray. That is it's contingent, contingent to you receiving it. And it's important to understand that, you know, you need to, uh, these, are, these are not laws, these are just principles and that we live by. Be quiet because we are, right now as I stand, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've had opportunities to minister at a, you know, a couple of, of, of funerals and a lot of times I've heard in the background, you know, individuals saying, well, they couldn't possibly be going to heaven based on their lifestyle. But their lifestyle doesn't have anything to do with them going to heaven. See, see, because if it did, it would become a work. And that's hard for a lot of people to get over because we were raised, like I said earlier, in a works mentality. And that's something hard to get out of, to get out of individuals. They're like tentacles. I mean, they're wrapped in every area of our life. And we're constantly thinking it's something we have to do. No, there's nothing you have to do but rest in what has already been done. And that's been done by our, by our, our our elder brother, our kinsman redeemer, our Boaz, Jesus Christ. So remember here, now this is important. He says, this word is health to your flesh and strength to all of your bones. So you need to speak to the body. That's all you need to speak to it. Now, if you get to the areas where you say, well, I don't feel it, but then you need to speak to it again. It's not based on a feeling. It's based on a completed work. Because in Proverbs 18, 21, Proverbs 18, 21, and this is like a familiar scripture. And I used to think, well, I already know what the scriptures say. I need to keep moving on. No. Uh, you need to get into this verse of scripture and let it minister to your mortal body. Because the psalmist says he meditates on this word. He says he meditates on it day and night. And see that word med med uh, meditate in uh, Hebrew is, is hagar. And what it actually means, they got it basically from an illustration of a cow. See, well, you know, like a cow, he has several stomachs, several chambers. And once he chews the food or whatever, then he swallows and then he brings it back up and he chews it again so that he might get up all the nourishment out of out of whatever he may be eating. We know that cows eat hay, grass, etc. And so that's what he's saying about this word. He says, get into this word. Don't rest. You know something I've learned, too? I'm not trying to rush through this. I'm taking my time with this here because I want to get everything I can get out of this. And I, that's why I just thank God for those that, you know, uh, that he sit around just me. And, you know, and it's one thing about the ministry that we're involved in. You, you know, we got people that, are, that study the word diligently. And if somebody's off track, guess what? You need to get back on track. This is where you need to be going. And that's why you need to get into this word. You need to get into this word and you need to study this word out. So in Proverbs 18, 21, it says. Notice what it says here. It says death. It starts with death. Then it ends with life. It says, it says death and life is in the power what, of the tongue. Because remember, I was telling you, words have creative power. The very seed of what you're speaking is in that word that comes out of your mouth whether it's life or death. He, so he says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And he says, they that love it, love what? Either life or death shall eat the fruit thereof. So it's telling me that death has a fruit and life has a fruit. And it's going to be based on the word that comes forth out of your mouth. See, so we want to say what God says. You don't want to be sin conscious. You want to be righteousness conscious because that's what God has made you. That's what he's declared uh, U.S. being, and he's paid the price. He's paid the ultimate price. Everything that God gave us, it was free, but it cost God everything. It cost him his son, and he was willing to give up everything. Why? So that you and I might live the victorious, overcoming, abundant life that Jesus came, that he said that we could live here now in the earth realm. So let's turn to Mark 11. Mark 11. Oh, excuse me. We said it's Matthew 12. Excuse me. We already went to Matthew 12. 
Matthew 12. Remember, salvation is a grace of God. And see, you can't apply it until you receive it. And remember, all grace is is just receiving all that God has freely and graciously given to each and every believer. But he died for the world, but the world has, all of the world has not received it. But though, to those that have received it to them, this God that you have received has become the very power of God that you need to expel anything that might be going on in your life. So uh, Matthew, that's uh, chapter 12. I'm going to start reading in verse uh, 35. Now remember, we, we're speaking about how important it is about what comes forth out of your mouth. Now remember, you are, not you're going to be, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it's, it's something you're going to have to speak to yourself every day, several times a day. And you want the word of God to have first place and final authority in everything that you do in life. So notice what it says here. And uh, I'm in Matthew 12. I'm going to start reading in verse 35. It says, a good man. Now, what makes you a good man? I'm a good man in Christ Jesus. I'm not just ordinary a good man because I do good things. But there's only one good, and that's God. So what makes me good is that I'm in Christ Jesus. Right. So that's so very important to understand. So a good man out of the, the good treasures, notice it says, of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. He says, but I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. See, when he's talking about the day of judgment, I thought it was the day that I died. No, that day of judgment is when that come to pass, them things that you, those idle words that you're speaking out of your mouth. What's an idle word? Here's a good example. My back's killing me. I, re I don't receive that, but I just, I'm giving you an illustration. You said, oh, you tickle me to death. See, those are idle words. See, but I was just playing. Say, words don't know as to whether or not you're playing or not. Just like that seed you go out and plant in the ground. Man, we're just going to plant this apple seed by it. Just, we're going to just be planting it. The apple seed is going to bring forth because it has come in contact with the earth. And so once that thought becomes a word, it's activated. It's in the atmosphere and it's going to come, come to pass. Those are idle words. So that's why it says... When I shared that verse of scripture that opened that the verse of scripture that I share with you in Proverbs 13, three, he that keeps his mouth, keeps his life. That's so very important. Your words have to be seasoned with salt. I like the way James said it. He says we need to bridle our tongue. See, because. In this, let me see, in Pro Proverbs, before I finish that verse of scripture, turn to Proverbs, I think it's 21, Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Don't, don't, don't ever forget, you are right now as you sit or as you stand or as you lay, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And remember, your righteousness is of him. Isaiah says, this is what we have inherited as a believer. So in Isaiah, I mean, uh, Proverbs 21, let me see, that's in verse, uh, and this, when I was reading this verse of scripture, it, 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 it brought me, it just popped up in my spirit, uh, John 3, 2, about the soul, I mean, about prospering the soul. See, and you prosper the soul by renewing your mind, and that's with, with the word of God. So in, in Proverbs chapter 21, verse uh, 23, it says, whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. See, because that tongue, that, that tongue is, the scripture says, like a fire. And, you sit, and, and, you sit, and it sit on course, basically the fires of hell. That's what the scriptures tell us, this tongue right here. So life and death, life and death is in it. I need to be speaking always life. And notice I said it. I always like to keep this in order. I said life and death. I want to say death and I want to always end with life. Death and life is in the power of what you say out of your mouth. So that's why it's important. Always remember you are right now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and the righteousness. Those that are, are the righteousness of God, they speak, they speak. So back over in uh, Matthew 12, 
uh, I started reading in uh, verse uh, 35. I'm going to uh, start back in verse 36. He says, but I say unto you, he says, that every idle word that a man shall speak, that they shall give account of thereof in, in the day of judgment. And it says, for by your words. Now, remember, words are not just noise. Words are what's coming out of your mouth. And once you become, once you become a sa saved and a born again Christian, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And God has freely given you all things that pertains to life and godliness. He says, for the, he says, by your words, he says, you will either be justified, made righteous, or by your words, he says, you shall be condemned. See, so even me becoming a born again Christian, it's going to take me confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart. See, it's, see, and that justifies me as being a saved person. You said, but I don't deserve it. I know it. I don't either. But that's what makes it grace. And that's why you have to always look at it. There's certain things that are absolutes. Well, you know, when, when I was going to school, I, I, I mean, I don't have anything against it, but they gave me a lot of misinformation. They used to tell me there was no such thing as an absolute. They were absolutely wrong. I'm telling you, there are absolutes. And, and, and uh, this is one of them. See, so you can either speak life and you can or you, you can either speak death. You can speak death or you can speak life. And here's an absolute. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Once you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. See, and I, I can't tell as to whether or not you believe this. But I can hear you confess it because this is a heart matter. No man knows the heart but God himself. See, so that's why when you speak the word, you need to stay in the word that the word continues to minister not only to you, but through you. So he that keeps his mouth. I like this is so good. It says he keeps his life. And when you go over and you look in Psalms. Uh, uh, 107.20, he says he sent his word, the psalmist there, he says he sent his word, he sent his word. Now you got to remember, God is the living word. Psalms 107, 107.20, he said he sent his word. It's just in reference to commanding his love toward us. He said he sent his word, and the, that word had a purpose. And uh, that's Psalm 107, verse 20. And it reads, it says, he sent his word to and healed them. Notice he says he sent his word. He says, and heal them. That word, that, that word, his word and healing are one and the same. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. From all, see, delivered is that that's past tense and delivered them from all destruction. He sent his word to do that. See, in the words, the word of God has power. When I think back, I heard a minister ministry at one time. You know, when uh, Jezebel, she could have sent an army against Elijah because Elijah had basically killed all of her prophets. But she didn't send an army, a battalion. She sent a word. All she said, tell Elijah, I'm going to kill him. And just based on that word, he ran in fear. So words have power to the good or either, either to the bad. But always remember, we are, as we stand, as we sit, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when God relates his word to us, he relates it to us in this fashion. Watch what he says over here in Isaiah 55. And then we're going to end it off in the new because I always, you know, like to give somewhat of a comparison. Well, how do you know it's a better if you don't know what the other was? So you, you need to give somewhat of a comparison by what, you, by what's, what you're emphasizing here. So uh, Isaiah, I'm going to start reading in verse, chapter 55. I'm going to start reading. In verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. He says, As far as the, the heavens are from the earth, are, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts uh, than your thoughts. 
So God says it's, uh, it's, there's an extreme difference from his ways, our ways, from our thoughts and his thoughts. See, our ways involve works. His ways involve gifts. And that's important to understand because it's not based on that. He says for us, and then he gives an illustration here I thought that I think that is very informing to me. He says in verse 10, he says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returneth not there, but he says, but it waters the earth. He's talking about the rain and the snow. He says it waters the earth and make it this to bring forth and, uh, and bud that it may, that is the earth, give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And he, and he referenced this to his word. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. See, the word goes forth from your heart, speaking that his words. So he's he's relating or referencing his word to the rain and the snow. He says, just as the it brings forth in the earth realm, he says, my word will bring forth also in the same fashion that goes forth out of your mouth. Because remember, righteousness speaks. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You you do. Every morning I declare and decree a thing and it's established based on me speaking. And, you know, it's one thing to know what the word says, but it's, going, it's even better once you speak it and that and you speak it with an understanding. And when you see, turn to first Peter 310. See, you. You have to speak these things into manifestation. And so I got to always go back and look and see how God did it. Because he told us to imitate him. First Peter. He told us to mimic him. You know, because at one time I, I can truly honestly say that everything that came forth out of my mouth it was based on just me not having any understanding of the word of God. So I might as well just been a parrot. You can teach a parrot to speak the word, but the parrot doesn't have any understanding about what he's saying. That's why it's important for you to get the word in your heart, speak it out of your mouth and speak it with an understanding. That's why you need to study. There's nowhere in scripture where he tells you just to read it. He wants you to study the word. So uh, first, first Peter chapter 3, I'm going to start reading in verse, 1 Peter 3, I'm going to start reading in verse 10. For he that, lo that will love life and see good days, let, us, let him refrain his tongue from evil. See, remember, you are, you are a speaking spirit. That's who you are. And you want to speak this regardless of the circumstances and the situations. See, and see, just a reference to show you how Jesus operated in the earth realm when he ran up on blind Bartimaeus in the 10th chapter of Mark, long 45, verses 45 and 46. Jesus could see that blind Bartimaeus was blind. He could see it. He had, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you know he knows all things because he is God in the flesh. But he still asked blind Bartimaeus what he wanted. And blind Bartimaeus had to speak that I might receive my sight. And once he spoke it, he had to receive that by faith. He says, according to your faith, because I just in my spirit, understanding what faith is today, I knew that blind Bartimaeus based upon what he had heard, what he had heard about Jesus, because he when he found that it was Jesus passing by, he cried out and he could, that let me know he had an expectation of good coming from the very man that he cried to. He said, have mercy on me. And God is gracious. He says, OK, according to your faith, let it be unto you. And it says immediately he received his sight. So in verse 10, starting again, uh, 310 of uh, First Peter, it says, for he that will love life and see good days, he says, let him refrain his tongue, his tongue, that tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Let's read that verse over in the Amplified Bible. He says, for let him who wants to enjoy life and see uh, uh, 
see good days, good whether apparent or not, keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile or treachery or deceit. See, because your words form your life. When you look back, when God looked out and he looked out and he saw darkness, he saw chaos, he saw things that did not have any form. What did he do? He didn't look over and he says, Michael or Gabriel, what I need for you to do, I need for you to get me the yellow pages. I need to look up an electrician. No, he didn't do that. What he did, he looked out, he looked out, he saw darkness and he spoke or brought light out of darkness. And where there was no form, he gave form. Where there was chaos, he gave order. And how did he do that? He did it with his words. And he told us, he told us right out of his word, he told us to imitate. That's in, he told us, that's in, in the book of Galatians. Let's turn over there. He told in Galatians 5. Oh, Ephesians. See what I told you? See them Bible scholars out there. <laughs> Ephesians 5. Excuse me. And he tells us, I want to read this in both uh, the Amplified and also the uh, um, King James. And I would always just uh, suggest that, you know, get your several uh, Bibles to, so that you might be able to, you know, study and just reference the word of God and, and look some of these words up. And, you know, a lot of times you might want to look a few of these words up in their original language. And the Bible was actually you know, sent forth in Greek. But it says God tells us he tells us in uh, Galatians, Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians 5, 1. He says, be ye therefore followers of God as as dear, dear children. And then over in uh, the Amplified, it says, therefore, be imitators of God. It says, copy him. And follow his example as beloved, as well beloved children. Imitate their father. So you got to remember, if God look, when I look back on how God operated, it says, and God said, and God said, this is Genesis 1, and God said, and God said, and then it said, God saw what he said. And everything that he said, he said he saw, and it was good. Not only was it good, it was very good. But how did it come to pass? It came to pass by his voice about him by him speaking. So remember, keep in mind that righteousness is not of works. Our righteousness, scriptures tells us, our righteousness tells us speak. But the righteousness, Romans 10, 5 and 8. I'm gonna read, no, Romans 10. I'm gonna read verses six, verse six. It says, but the righteousness which is of faith, it speaks. Now remember, it's righteousness that's speaking, not faith. That righteousness is received by faith. And what says thou? I want to drop down to that verse eight. And it says, but what says righteousness? It's the word. It says it's in near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Words have creative power. God says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He has made you right. He has declared you right. So we want to say what God says. He told us to imitate him, follow him, copy him as beloved children, because you're special to this God of the Bible. and He loves you and he loves you based on who he is and not on what you do. That helped me a whole lot. So I, I didn't have to just just try and fake it because Jesus had already paid in full everything that the, the, that would be brought against me in, in days to come. Because when Jesus died for my uh, shortcomings, guess what? I, I was not even born.